Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Faster Way podcast. I am so thrilled to be here today with Dr. Dan Sullivan. Dr. Dan, thank you so much for being with us. It's an honor to be here. I am excited, and uh, yeah, it's always always a pleasure to, to speak to you, Amanda. We met at an event a couple of months ago, and I was drawn to your energy immediately. We actually ended up going out for dinner with a couple of colleagues that night and became fast friends. We are so aligned on many topics related to health and wellness, related to faith, related to business. But as we dive into this conversation, I'd love for you to share with us when and why you entered into the wellness industry. When and why did you become a chiropractor? Well, it's a great uh, it's a great transition into the beginning because I'm no probably no different than a lot of people listening. I grew up in the medical model. So, I come from a family of 8 kids. I'm the fifth, I'm the middle child of 8. And so when I grew up, and I, I've said this, you know, a thousand times from stages and, and clinical practice and on podcasts, is that I, I not only had one set of tubes in my ears, I had two. I had my tonsils taken out at nine. I had three siblings with Crohn's disease. So I grew up in the medical model, no different than, again, the majority of us. My mom's a nurse. She was a nurse for 37 years. My two oldest brothers are medical doctors. So I was on a one-way path where I want to be like them. But when I was 16 years old, I got injured pole vaulting, and, and it's a you know a track and field event. Injured my low back, went to doctor after doctor after doctor. In fact, one doctor, this was my mom's last straw, and she a doctor had said, we think your son is faking it because no tests indicated what was wrong. And I'm just like, mom, listen. And, and he said, we think it's in we think it's in his head. And and they and this was this was back in 1997. You know, and, and, and attempted to, to say there may be some antipsychotics needed involved here. And my mom left in a, in a hurry, thank the Lord. And on the way home, she said, and this had a research center, so we had to go two hours back home. I'm from Nebraska, middle, middle of Nebraska. And she said, she said they, he thinks it's in your head. I said, Mom, if it's in my head, just tell me how to get out of it. All I want to do is run, run around the track. Wow. Baseball season is around the corner, huge athlete family. So... That next Tuesday, my, uh, one of my siblings had a dentist appointment, and our dentist, Dr. Doyle, said, you should try a chiropractor. And that was kind of the beginning of the end. Chiropractor helped me, and then he said one thing. He said these, these famous words to me. He says, you should be a chiropractor. And I never thought anything of it, didn't know what chiropractic was, get into school. I ended up playing baseball in college. We were big, get big into sports. I thought I was just going to go take care of athletes with back pain like I was. And then I got into chiropractic college and I was open, like it opened my eyes. And if those of you, you know, following, maybe you're not as familiar with chiropractic, I, I can relate. Here's what I will say, Amanda. This is, this is, a, this was thinking about this. I talk about this often. I was in my second trimester of chiropractic college and I was learning about how the body heals from the inside out. And I was 21 years old, 22 years old. And I thought, I've never learned, like to me, these big hospitals and research centers and, and you know, fancy technology, they got the answers. I, I would have had no different you know, perspective. But I was learning physiology and I was studying the digestive tract and we were in a cadaver lab. And I remember going and dissecting the cadaver. And I remember seeing if you, you, you know, the, the digestive tract, if you look at a, the lining of the di digestive tract, it is semi-permeable, meaning as a nutrition and fat loss, like it will allow some things across but some things it won't, and that goes through you as waste. But there's a, a mechanism that allow that knows what to go across. And I remember studying it, and I thought to myself, and we went back and I studied the cadaver, and I looked at how thin that digestive lining was. And I'm like, this is incredible. Like the fact of the matter is that little lining directs our life. It is the thing that filters the good from the bad. And what I hit what hit me then is the greatest healer is not on the outside. The greatest doctor is not on the outside. The greatest doctor is on the inside. And so as a chiropractor, we always sought to remove interference, honor the power, remove the interference. And as I, I you know, we'll get into here is like the work that you do with your, with your clients and across the world, like starts with this idea that the greatest doctor is on the inside, that God put that power inside us. And when you start from there, your, your, actions change your path changes but if we don't start from there you end up going down at what i would call a slippery slope that anything goes and i believe i don't even believe i know that's why we're in a, in a struggle that we are today is because we don't start from that 
premise, we start from the premise is the body's weak, defective, bound to break down, and you're going to need some sort of doctor, drug, or surgery to heal you. And it starts with pregnancy. If you look at pregnancy, like my wife and I, we've got three daughters, you know, home birth. She was, you know, do the Bradley birth instructor. Like we do the whole thing. And, you know, we, so we studied pregnancy. If you study that, you just realize, wow, if God created it this way and we're, we're not. So you get the point. I could go on for hours, but thank you for asking. And that's where it started. The power is within. God didn't create us with defects. I think so many times we just assume that we have some sort of defect. But I love your perspective. We are absolutely aligned. I read that you were a chiropractor for NCAA and the Olympic team. Can you tell us just a little bit about that? Yeah, it was a it was a great experience. So 2010, 11, 12, I was in Moscow and Istanbul and then in London taking care of the U.S. wrestling team. So it was particularly for the U.S. Greco-Roman and freestyle uh, wrestling team. And that was a great experience. I mean, you know, you think about these guys performing at the highest level. I remember one guy, we, we, were, we were in uh, Istanbul, and the other teams get wind that we're taking care of these athletes and we're, you know, adjusting them and just making sure they have all the diet and nutrition and things that they need. And, the, and, and they could, you know, these guys from Iran are really good, and they would come over to our table and be like, they can't, you know, a different language, but they're like, you do that, you do that to me. And, we're like, and, the, and the coach is like, no, 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 these are our. So we were part of the performance team. And it wasn't to take care of back pain and neck pain. It was so that they can maximize performance. And so in the world that I live in, in chiropractic and study, and now I've just studied neurology. I'm an evidence-based science guy. Like, I need to know the why, how things work. And so that combined with the techniques that I always uh, learned and was able to to utilize, you know, allowed me to put on some pretty, pretty cool stages. Yeah. So that's fun. Wow. The Olympics. That is so cool. Is there any, like any cool stories you can tell us from helping athletes optimize? Were there any people who had like major problems or pain points and you just helped them totally transform so that they could compete better? The way I actually arrived there is a good story because, so I took care of, so John Cook is the, I, I practiced my first practice in Lincoln, Nebraska, and John Cook is the Nebraska volleyball coach. Uh -huh. And Nebraska is a, you know, it, they are powerhouse, like always top five. And he's probably going to go down as the top five coach in, 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 you know, in volleyball. So he had a player, her name, was, uh, her name was Rachel, and she came in. Her family started care in my office in Lincoln. And she started getting chiropractic care, you know, in my office from me. And then we started teaching her a couple of other things in, in, in lifestyle. And she went from a bench player to a starter within four months over the summer. And literally, he literally comes into me and he's like, and because he goes, what are you doing, Rachel? He goes, the only thing I'm doing different than any other players, I'm going to see this chiropractor. And that got me a conversation with John. John brought me on, took care of his daughter, took care of his wife, took care of his, his son, took care of him, the entire team. And so I say the cool part about that is that, you know, she goes from a local walk-on to a starter at the highest level of, of, of volleyball because of her performance. And so I think the takeaway for me there is, and speaking to, to all of you out there, is that you, you know, God put the most amazing healing power inside you. And when you, when you understand that, like, like, let me give you an example, because I, my wife always knows this. Every time I talk on a stage, I talk about breast milk. I talk about breast because I talk about breast milk. And here's why <laughs> that, that, that most people don't know this, but when a mother breastfeeds a baby, when a mother's nursing the baby, there's receptors on the nipple of the mom that are detecting the saliva of the baby. And those, and when it does that, it literally will change the makeup of the breast milk according to the perfect, perfect needs of that baby at that time. Why do I say that? Because when you start to like really study how amazing the body is, how recuperated it is, how, you know, some of you may out there, you're like, you're trying to get that extra 10, 20 pounds off, or, or maybe you, you're around a group of people who are like, you know what, just, just take the drug. You can't do it by yourself because you see, this is the thing that I really have a, a vested interest in is because when you start from the place that the body's amazing and you start to understand how amazing it is, then you start to realize that I can do this and some small action steps get me. It's this, this, I have this book. I always read this book. It's on my desk. It's called the DNA of hope. And I got to say, Amanda, we share the, the same worldview, you know, Genesis 1, 1, God created the heavens and the earth. 1, 27, he created us in his image. We have an ability to not only heal, but to create. And when we can create, one of the things we could create is better health. Mm -hmm. And we could do that by honoring that greatest doctor inside. So you asked me a question. I know I go off on here because I get so fired up and excited about 
about the questions you yeah. asked. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love your respect and passion for pregnancy, for birth, for the postpartum journey. My most powerful seasons of life were pregnancy, postpartum, at home birth. At home birth, oh my gosh. I genuinely wish every single person listening had an opportunity to experience at home birth, whether, you know, a female being the one in labor or the dad watching this experience. I remember specifically with Ty, my fifth, it it was so clear that we were on the same team. Like I had done quite a bit of research about how the baby goes through the birth canal. I could feel him kind of shifting and moving through the birth canal. It was a very quick labor and delivery. We ended up, I was out in my hot tub. I was going to just simply do 10 contractions out in the hot tub, then go up into the whole birthing pool that I had set up in my room. No, it was so fast. I actually delivered in the hot tub, but it was such an incredible experience and the fact that then the baby immediately knows how to breastfeed. I, I, it's just incredible. And again, God doesn't create us with defects. So I love this perspective. I think so many times we think our situation is complicated. I was speaking with a client earlier this morning. I'm saying, how are you feeling? She goes, I've been with Fast Away for a year. I've never felt better. She goes, my biggest thing that I'm shaking my head at is I thought it was complicated. I thought I was complicated. I thought it was complicated. I started faster way. I'd been two years, couldn't sleep, had digestive issues, you know, this, that, and the other. I won't share, you know, all her issue, but she's like, you know, I start faster way four weeks in. I feel incredible. I'm lifting heavy again. I'm able to sleep. My digestion is regular. And she goes in, it's been now a year of this. And I, I'm just, she goes, I was overcomplicating it. And, and this gal as well, strong believer, but the fact is whole food nutrition, the type of nutrition that God intends for us, healthy movement, sunlight. I, I mean, it's just great. You know, many of my clients listening, Dan, are women in midlife. Our average client age is 43. We've got, you know, hormone imbalances. We, we're dealing with menopause. A lot of my clients, they come in and they feel defeated because they've, they have tried things. They've been told by their doctor, oh, you can't lose weight because of hormones. What would you say is the most common underlying factor of the health problems that we're facing in today's world? Like if, if you could say, you know, based on my experience and, and my you know, clients and re- like, here's the most common underlying factor of the health problems. What would you say that is? It's a great question. And I could go down a few different ways. I believe that the number one thing is that we are not aware of the powers that be and what we're up against. And, and let me give you some research on this because you, you know, this research, some don't, but there was research that, sh- that came out. So if you, if you're within 15 p- feet of a high producer, you will produce, you will produce 15% higher. But if you're within 15 feet of a low producer, you will actually drop your production or performance by 30%. Why do I bring that up? Is because our environment is so critical, and, and this has been done over and over again. And so where I live right now is this idea in my mind is like to really, really bring awareness to the fact that it what we're being exposed to, and so. The people out there, what, what I have, you know, when I have always, in, especially in clinical practice, is I've, when I bring people into an environment where they have hope, where they feel heard, where then they get to look at that body that we just described, and just, I, I like to kind of blow their mind a little bit, because they say, if it's that big of a, you, you mentioned, you know, how does a baby come out and know? Do you know there's something called the breast crawl? And this isn't all about, you know, uh, you know <laughs> birth and breast, but at the same time, do you know, like, there's something called the breast crawl. You can put a baby, a mom can have a baby, put the baby on the tummy, and the baby will go to the breast and start. So my analytical curious, curious mind says, why does it go down to the big toe and start sucking that, <laughs> right? Turns out, now watch, turns out that, that breast milk smells like amniotic fluid, so it's going to where it knows. That's perfection. And so I think the first thing that, that somebody who's struggling out there say, you got to get into an environment like you've created, Amanda, with all of the people out there where you can, you can felt heard and you can be exposed to the fact that you can do it. And then that idea of it's ETC, I always used to teach this on my radio show, end the confusion, end the confusion, right? And so those are two big things. But I, I think the third thing I would say, 
is this, if you don't know who the enemy is, if you don't know who the opponent is, and I don't like to call it necessarily enemy, but if there's an opponent out there, there is somebody that's vying for your attention. And, and I just, I, I have lived, if I go back over my history over the last 20 years, any success that I had is because I have felt the need to protect those that can't protect themselves. And, and things that have come in my sphere of influence, and I'm, I'm kind of a deep thinker, so I'm like very curious, why does that happen? Why would somebody do that? And when you start to go down that path, you start to recognize, wow, there are some powers that be and some very clear incentives in our culture to keep you sick and to keep you obese and to keep you pre-diabetic. And you may say, I just don't agree with it. Like I've got two oldest brothers and medical doctors, right? And they went through school just like 80% of every medical doctor without one stitch, not one, not one credit, not a half a credit of nutrition. Now, I'm not blaming them and I'm not judging them. I'm evaluating that if you are in healthcare and you do not know anything about what goes into the mouth nor give it any concern, we have an issue, right? And so I think where the, where the rub lies, where the challenge lies is there's so many men, women, children out there, particularly women who run the home and you know, are working and doing all the things, like everything. And yet they're like, I don't have any time for me. And, and then they hear this you know, commercial or their doctor says, this is the fast way, it's not your fault. Like, are we going here? Because I could say, like, if you look at Weight Watchers, if you look at these things, they're saying, it's not your fault. Like, it's not your fault. It's, it's all this or that. And it allows you to say, you have no hope. That's the thing I like to fight against, because that's not true. And so, I got a little bit fired up about that. But yeah, I think that that would be Okay, Dan, I am also fired up and I love your passion and energy. So so we got to go there. So <laughs> you were kind of like beating around the bush a little bit. Here's what you are referencing. So you're saying, listen, you know, you called it out. Weight Watchers, you said it. Weight Watchers now, you know, Oprah is saying, I apologize for ever saying to take ownership of your own health and wellness because it's not your fault. And not only is she saying that, not only is she saying, I apologize for asking you to take ownership and responsibility, she's saying, now simply try Ozempic. Okay, so that we're just breaking it down. This is as simple as it gets. Weight Watchers is saying, it's not your fault. Oprah's coming out. I'm sorry I ever asked you to take personal responsibility. What you should do now is simply try Ozempic. So we've talked about Ozempic here on the podcast. Ozempic is the biggest story of 2023. A lot of people say, oh, it's ChatGPT, it's OpenAI. No, false. Ozempic is the biggest story of 2023. I did a podcast recently about the deals that make the world, basically the the deals that are worldwide, the businesses that are worldwide, not just simply within the borders of the US, not just simply within the borders of Europe, like Ozempic semi-glutides is one of these conversations. So you referenced it, we are now there. Let's talk through some of your opinions because no matter if we want to or not, like people are gonna be hearing from their doctor in the near future, who again, medical doctor probably doesn't have a lot of nutrition, background or education, who's going to say, hey, there's a magic button now. There's a there's an easy pill now. Magic pill, easy button. Here, he, Go ahead and do this. I got a very close friend. Literally dinner Sunday night. I, I'm having this, you know, horrible pain in my stomach. I don't know what the pain is from. I go, do you think it might be the semi-glutide? <laughs> you know, like, the, mm-hmm. the shot that you're doing, you know, like you think about, mm-hmm. what, so share some of your opinions on this and, and I'm not going to sit here in strategy, Shane, but I want to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah. And I, and I love, I know you have Dr. Koch and then there was another doc, um, you know, that you had on brilliant people. And, and I, and I, here's my thing. And I, I was texting with a buddy of mine. He's a PhD sharp dude. And I was fired up about this and, and he kind of came back and said, but listen, you know, I fly by the seat of my pants, like, because his wife was thinking about get, getting on this, this, this drug. And he said, we just don't have time. I don't think I could do the lifestyle that you would suggest I do. And I said, here's the thing. I said, I'm not right now. That's not my battle cry. My ba- biggest battle cry is it, I may not be for everybody. Your plan may not be for, here's what I say is I will not sit by and allow the control of 
what you're being exposed to to say this is the only thing. Right now, what we know about this thing, the reason why it's such a big deal is because it's the most revenue generating drug of all time. Like it is blowing out margins and it's going to, now, if you're a business, you're a great business, you're like, hey, if I've got a ton of people that could use this, I got a big market and then I could get the doctors behind it. This is where it gets, gets real crazy is that one side effects aside, this stuff is getting pushed through we're going to see obesity clinics just like we see cancer clinics and cardiovascular clinics and they're just going to do this drug and if you don't understand the ramifications we're in a tough now let me go back to a second because 2021 tufts university came out with a study very familiar the food compass this let me just show you how kind of absurd some of this thinking is because it comes from the same place that food companies created this research this research came out to say two of the examples honey nut cheerios are are healthier than beef and Fruit Loops are three times healthier than eggs. Stop. So you start to see like who in their right mind would, but yet that's the stuff that's bought and paid for. The thing that I get really fired up about, Amanda, like when we look at the security of this nation, do you know that one condition, one and one only spends more, diabetes and prediabetes and all of that it affects, spends more on treating that than the entire defense department. Did you know that 72%, you'll like this one, 72% of the evacuations from Iraq, it's, it's so sad and unfortunate, 72% of the evacuations from Iraq and Afghanistan were from more, were more 70% more from obesity related than injury in combat. We know that 77% of our current youth can't, can't qualify to be in, in the military. Why is this important? Because all the while we're looking at other things, this health matter, is literally boiling us like like frogs right we're in this and then we don't know and then we can't get out that's why what you do amanda and i and I, I need you to listen to this i know you know this and everybody listen to this you you got to get control so how do you do it like what do you go first off is recognizing i need to get control so your control is, is up to you you know this is a beautiful country we have freedoms that you know inalienable right the life liberty the pursuit of happiness and that means that part of that is saying hey you have the right to choose and so we, Amanda and I, are just on your side and saying, hey, what you're being exposed to, we've gone down rabbit trails, so I know that maybe you won't, but man, lean into us, lean into the programs, do it knowing that you can heal and that you can then avoid this really bought and paid for system. And, and by the way, I, I know I'm going off on this, but there's one other thing, because there's a bigger piece to this. If you've ever studied you know, what happened, the Flexner Report in 1910 and, and Rockefeller, I don't want to get too deep because it gets crazy, but all of this is not doctor's fault. It's not, you know, great people that you go to church with that are, you know, MDs and, and, and even in the weight loss field. It became this, you know, Rockefeller said this, he goes, I don't want to, we don't need a nation of thinkers, we need a nation of workers. Mm -hmm. And he then took, in 1910, they took a report that basically anybody that doesn't practice allopathic care, which is the treatment of drugs and uh, treatment of symptoms or conditions with drug surgery and, and radiation, is quacks and unscientific. This led down this path to where we sit here, like even the things we talk about right now, not only do the powers that be not want us talking about, they will say that you guys are unscientific. And th again, just not true. So we get a little passionate about this and, and I just want everybody to know that they can heal and uh, the control is in their hands. Yeah, you are giving people hope that their own body is meant to perform optimally because they've been created without a defect. And I think that is such an important message, uh, you know, just to kind of put a bow on it from the standpoint of the semi-glutide conversation. I think, you know, my biggest concern is even if you're losing weight on these drugs, you're absolutely losing muscle. I am a major massive fan of building muscle as you age, maintaining muscle in late life, not allowing your muscle to atrophy. Okay, so that for me is a big, big problem. The research from these drug companies is already saying that you will need to be on these drugs for the rest of your life in order to maintain the weight loss. And I know too much about the obesity industry. I know too much about the weight loss industry, the business of weight loss. When you maintain a major deficit long term, you are going to damage your metabolism, period, end of story. And if you stop that drug, you will get fat faster.
okay, every time you lose weight from maintaining an extreme calorie deficit and then stop what you're doing, you will get fat faster. It is simply science. Okay, that is science. That <laughs> is the facts. And so for me, again, you know, I am not going, I've said it multiple times, I'm not going to strategy shame specifically because I personally cannot prescribe drugs or medication. So for me to just sit here and strategy shame makes me look bad just because, you know, I'm, I'm insecure or whatever. But I have now friends, colleagues, many friends and colleagues who are doing this, who are trying it, who are seeing temporary results, like many times we do with any sort of quick fix, temporary results. And then they're having, I mean, the symptoms alone, and then they're going off and they're gaining weight back. And I literally just had someone else in my office this morning. She said, I tried this thing. And then I finally said, you know what? I have to call Amanda. I tried this thing and it was uncomfortable and brutal and expensive and then I finally said I gotta call Amanda and is sitting in my office and I'm saying okay here's what we're gonna do whole food nutrition we're gonna drink more water we're gonna get some sunlight we're gonna believe in the power that our body has to heal itself and to be at an optimal point from the standpoint of metabolism and energy and and strength we're gonna lift heavier you know so I just you know I want everyone listening to just educate yourself properly understand the who, what, when, where, why, how behind a lot of these drugs, kind of, you know, follow the research a little bit. I, I really just think it's important. And and Dan and I both, we want you to win. Okay. That's what I said to this client in the office today. I said, I want you to win. My only motive, my only agenda is to help you succeed. And I'm going to do it in, in a biblical way and in a way that I know is going to be long lasting. What do you personally do, Dan, to keep your mind, body, and spirit at an optimized level? Like, what are some of the tips that you have? Because you have such an incredible energy and, and passion. What's your health and wellness routine? Let, let me just take one step and say one thing on that on that Ozempic thing. Just my, I'm such a kind of a neuro evidence based guy. When you look, the other thing I think about, I mean, in that, and it is that, you know, at the end of the day, right? Like, what do we have? Is like at the end of the day, you have a me, you have these synapses that were created through memories, right? We say they're memories. You have these memories. The way, and 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 we believe, you know, it's like God put you here for a purpose, and so you have a, a purpose on, and a calling on your life, and then you're going to remember those and. At the end of our lives, we can remember those. And so, the one of the things that really, again, grinds my gears about that that medication also is that you know it, it just really destroys your serotonin levels because your gut, you know, is direct to the brain and serotonin. And so, what we're also seeing with that is high levels uh, of depression, even suicidal tendencies. And so, whichever way you dice it, like I, I really think like that we again we're not they're not paying attention. Some of the, that drug by the company isn't even legal in the company that it comes from. So, I just want to make sure. And I think the only reason most people choose it, to your point, is that, is that they don't know there's a better way or there's a way. There is a way and you are capable and you can. And so, so the first thing back to your question of what do I do is I surround myself in an environment around people and my home and my office and my gym like that I'm around people that think like me. Mm -hmm. And that act like me. And so we, I've got, I've got, my wife is, I can't wait to meet her. Her, her name is also Amanda. So we've got three girls, 13, 10, and six. And, you know, we live in this model of say, you know, it's caught, not taught, you know, and my wife is so good at this. Things are caught, not taught, especially in the home. And so um, we're very specific on how we eat. For me personally, I like I intermittent fast. So Monday through Saturday, I intermittent, intermittent fast and uh, I work out six to seven days a week. And mostly like I've done some physique shows in the past. So I'm always like, I just like lifting. Yeah. I had a herniated disc a few years ago. It was really nasty. So I've moved to like band work and just resistance training with bands. But so, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, whole food, you know, uh, I've been down the path and, and know, you know, chiropractic is a major part of my life. Movement every single day is a part of my life. Being outside, you know, yeah, so, so it's, uh, it's fun raising kids and, and, and kind of, you know, again, instill these principles in them. What would you suggest as a chiropractor we do? Because actually we haven't spoken about this on the podcast before, which is, is kind of shocking. So I am not a good example of this and, and you're gonna kind of shake your finger at me. So I go to the chiropractor when I have a problem. 
when I'm in pain, I go to the chiropractor. But I know you'd probably say, no, no, you need to get adjusted twice a week or three times a week. Tell me kind of what your recommendation is and why. Well, the first thing is usually, again, that type of, you know, frequency is usually, is there a problem that needs to be dealt with early on? That's what we call intensive care, initial intensive. But, you know, right now, like I get, I get checked and adjusted once a week, you know, at, at most typically. But yeah, again, chiropractic is about maximizing, you know, there's three components of health, you know, neurologic, metabolic, and psychological, right? And so part of that neurolog neurology, the autonomic nervous system is directly related and intimately connected to the spine. So the movement of the spine is intimately connected to your brain. And this is why all those good hormones and all function and all hearts, lungs, breathing, digestion. I could tell you how many, you know, women that have, have you know, I've gotten pregnant and it sounds crazy, but like through adjustments, they couldn't get pregnant, they get pregnant. It's because of that connection into the nervous system through the spine. And so I've, I've spoken all over the world on this, this connection between the neurology of the brain and how the spine. So that's the purpose is like, like this morning, I, I got this morning, my, my, my daughter is, you know, she was having like a coughing, you know, attack, my six year old. And so, you know, took her downstairs to the table, adjust, checked and adjusted her. She needed a couple of adjustments in a couple of areas. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's for that, you know, full wellness, maximizing function care. And even, you know, young. So if you see this, you can see this picture, well, yep, right I behind can. me a little bit, um, you know, adjusting, and people say, well, when you, when did you first adjust your, your kiddos? And it was, you know, minutes old, you know? And so because of the birth, you know, the birth trauma, even birth, even just the birth experience, even full natural. So yeah, chiropractic is such a, so, but, but the, but the key too is the adjustments regularly movement is so critical. That's why I love when you do high, high intensity training, the hormones combined with the movement and then some, some resistance, the body needs resistance. So see, I just studied this stuff enough to know, figure out what is best, you know, to, to maximize a human, but to do it in today's environment where you're not, you know, spending three hours at the gym, mm. you know? So that's why I love, love the work you do. Yeah. Yeah. We do two days a week of high intensity interval training, three days a week of strength training. I'm lifting heavier this year than I have in years. And so I am feel, I've been sore, Dan, since the year started. I, I, that's not an exaggeration. I just texted my husband as you were speaking and said, can you give me a chiropractor appointment? We've got a great gal here. She is awesome. You'd love her. But yeah, I need to be better about that. Cause it is, I think, part of preventative health as well to go to the chiropractor. And that's really interesting. I'll have to learn more about the science of kind of the spine and the brain and, and all that connection for sure. Uh, as we close the conversation, can you share with us two of your top health and wellness tips? Maybe it's something related to supplements. Maybe it's something related to sleep. I, I would just love to hear two final tips for my audience, these women, these men who want to optimize their, their lifestyle. Yeah, so I would say the number one thing as a chiropractor is because it comes to me and I've studied, if you look at this brain, I also have this brain, I create this brain lamp behind me that is now in, you know, thousands of offices around the world of, uh, in, in chiropractic. And there was a time about 15 years ago where we studied, you know, chiropractic. It, it was because chiropractic worked on the back. You, we thought it was about the back, but it turned as the reason why chiropractic has existed and got results that it has because it's about the brain. And so I want everybody to think about their spine and their posture. It's not about cosmetic. It's about your brain health. When you work out, you feel better. When you take a shower, you get your best ideas in the shower. I don't even need it. I know it's a fact because you're getting this, what we call proprioceptive, proprioceptive input. It's, it's actually nutrition into the brain. So movement is critical for that. So with 60% of the workforce, like us working in front of computers, just be very aware of not only your posture, but drink a lot of water. So you have to go to the bathroom. So you have to move, right? So movement, that's the first thing, moving your body, feeling you don't want to be, you know, in a certain position, periods of time. So that's first and foremost. And then, you know, sleep is critical. And so I, and, I, and again, some people say, how would you, how do you, you know, how, how do you sleep? Here's the big, here's the biggest thing. Most people don't know that your nervous system is the only system of the body that speeds up when you sleep. Every other system slows down. Why? Because you heal when you sleep. And so when you he, when you sleep, you have to sit, everybody knows this, those that don't sleep good, you are on a one-way path to, you know, losing energy and depleting systems in the body. And so if you're having trouble sleeping, 
then we've got we got we got to fix that. And there's a lot of ways to fix that through nutritional, through movement. I would start there through sunlight. You know, chiropractic care is shown to be doing it. So sleeping is is critical. You can also black out. Make sure it's black out. Lower the lower the body lower your body temperature a degree. That's shown to really help sleep. So there's a lot of things I've studied in sleep. And uh, those two things, move your body posture and sleep. Love it, Dan. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to our audience. I love your passion. I love your focus. Before the the podcast, you know, we talked about how aligned we are on all things health and wellness. And I agree. When it comes to bringing integrity back to nutrition and fitness or disrupting the wellness industry in particular, it's going to take us. It's going to take you. It's going to take me. It's going to take my coaches. It's going to take my clients. We are up against so much when it comes to the food industry, these drug companies, big pharma. And and so we just have to keep supporting each other. We just have to keep encouraging each other because what we're doing is extremely important. And if we want to make a substantial dent at all, we just have to band together and, and be unified toward those goals. So thank you, Dan. We appreciate the value that you shared and we're better off for it. You got it. Thank you so much for having me, Amanda. Bye, everyone.